Yo, what is up everybody? This is your boy Backpack Mo, back with another video, man. And I am here in the dungeon, in the place where it all goes down with the man, the myth, the legend, the no mad kidding. scientist. I gotta get you all your accolades, brother. Sumo. Thank you, man. Good to see you again, man. Yes, Good yes. To see you. So uh, for you guys who don't know, I just returned from Turkey. And uh, one of the things that I like doing when I go to different countries is finding out, you know, what's the national drink or the national spirit, and then taking that spirit and you know, bringing it back home and then, you know, providing it to the mad scientist right here and see if he can add his own twist to it, but also keeping the same traditions yep. of the spirit uh, itself because, you know, we, we still want to keep up with that. Uh, today, this was a really a tough one for me personally because um, I was in Turkey and I brought home some Turkish Reki. And uh, for that, I've had it before, but the only thing that bothered me about it was that black licorice taste. And, you know, it was just yeah, kind of so just like, ah. It's in your face. It's a little rough. Yeah, so I decided, you know what? If I bring it to the mad scientist, he can turn water into wine. He can make something <laughs> special. So, uh, you sell him <laughs> hey, 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 bro. Yeah. So uh, I know he can do it. And uh, yeah, we're here to, you know, to, to see what we can do. So uh, Justin, to take it away, man. All right, man. Uh, so, you know, I was doing my research on it. I saw a couple of your videos and, you know, I have a Turkish friend and I was asking about it and they were saying it's such a traditional drink. Uh, so I got two different cocktails for you today. One, the first one, I want to keep it as traditional as possible while putting a little spin on it. Um, and then the second one, we got a little experimental. So we're going to try it out and see if it works, but I think we got some good in our hands. All right, let's, let's get it on. You know? Let's go. Let's get it. <clears throat> so Justin, uh, traditionally the, the Reiki itself is just going to be poured over a um, little bit of um, ice or poured over water. Then we're adding some ice cubes just to kind of uh, cool it down. And it totally changes the appearance of it. Now, as yeah. you can see, it's you know really transparent here. But once you pour water or add water to it, it kind of gives it some type of milky uh, look to it at the end. So this is basically a, a Turkish uh, spirit. Um, it's, very, it's very similar to like a licorice. And she's gonna show like, I guess, how you're supposed to serve it. So you add a little bit of water to it. You see how cloudy it gets, all right? Next, what do we do? Reke. Uh-huh. That's the name of the spirit. Uh, uh, Reke? Reke? Reke. 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 Sorry, sorry, I have a butcher there. Add a couple of ice cubes. See how it kind of gets milky over there? All right. This is more like a, I guess, April chief. You know what I mean? Something to kind of open up the palate. So, yes. Is that it? Yeah, just drink it. All right. Oh yeah, it smells like black licorice to me. Um, so let's taste it and see what it's like. Uh, wait, hold on. What are we supposed to do? Go down. Cheers. All right. Now one more time. Oh, no. All right. All right. There we go. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's all licorice. It tastes like, it's not strong. So you don't have like a tequila or a uh, heavy whiskey, but it, it's, it's smooth, but it's very, very licorice forward. So like I said, take it away. Um, yeah. Tell okay. me what you, like based on those things, how, how did you, or how, what are you planning to do to, you know? Well, again, I said, I try to keep it as traditional as possible, you know? So I saw the color change when you add it to it. It's almost like certain um, absinthe drinks, you know, take absinthe and it'll have a little sugar cube and right, water over right. it and change the color up a okay. little bit. I wanted to switch that up. So I went through a couple of different iterations in my mind about what to do. My initial thought process is, all right, man, when I did my research, apricot is like one of the, the, the biggest fruits from Turkey. You know, I guess some people say that's where apricots came from. Really? Okay. So I wanted to do something with apricot. So I wanted to initially take apricot and make it like a, a clarified punch almost, you know, with the milk and the acid and everything kernel it up. But then I found out peach was something that was also big in Turkey as well. So what I went ahead and did was I made a apricot and peach clarification, but there's so much pectin in peach. There's a little pectin in apricot that I just figured, you know, let me go ahead and leave the milk curds out. It's going to take the drink and, and kind of change the texture in a way that I didn't necessarily want to do. So what I did was I blended some peaches, I uh, roasted off some apricots, blended it all together, added some water, okay. let it steep a little bit, added a little bit of sugar just to give it a little bit of sweetness because the apricots weren't as ripe as I would like them to be. And then I 
put out nine bottles and <laughs> try to that, put this through coffee right filters. Here? Yeah, this okay. took me about 14 hours. Y'all should have seen it. It was it was a mess. But I think we got something good here. So what I'm gonna do is uh well first add a little bit of the apricot peach okay. water. So there's no liquor in, in this at There's no okay. liquor in okay. this at all. Okay. Right. Like you see, all that pectin from some of the fruit gives it this nice, thick texture. Now, it's not as clear as I would like it to be, but you know, going through the process of figuring out how to make milk punches, it doesn't necessarily make things clear, but it takes a lot of the color out. Okay. So what your original color is, is you're just gonna have a lighter version of that yeah. because it's already gonna be a nice peach apricot color. I figured there's, there's no reason to use a milk punch. Okay. Uh, method, at least. So then what we'll do is we'll add I don't know how much they use over there. We got a, a light bottle here, and I'm sorry, you, you left me with more than we're seeing right here. You know, yes. uh -huh. grandma came over and she tapped us a little. <laughs> That's okay. No, no, traditionally, so when you sit down, they normally give you a bottle like this for yeah. the table, right? And you kind of just prepare it for yourself. Exactly. Whether you want to add the water or whether you want to drink it straight, um, you really don't get like a, a shot of it. They give you this per table. You can get smaller, bo uh, larger bottles than this, but this is tr traditionally how you're gonna give it, you know? Yeah. And you know, depending on who you're with or how many you may have, this can, you can stretch this out. Yeah, so. I mean, this gets very strong. And I know when I initially tasted it just by itself, I was like, I don't know, man, this ain't for me. And then, you know, after you drop the bottle off, I was like, let me try this in some water. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, you know, this totally not, changes, it like changes the whole, a lot, the but it's, it's not, for me, I like it. You know, I'm a, a, a Boulevardier, Negroni kind of guy. So I've, I've gotten, as I've gotten older, I've liked those bitter flavors. Yeah. And this actually, you know, this is a nice sipper for me. Yeah. So you can already tell the color changed up a little bit. It added a little bit of cloudiness. We're gonna throw some ice on this. One thing that I thought about doing was, you know, basically making this into a simple syrup, but. Okay. So I mean, I feel like it's gonna take away from it so much. It'd be such a pivot from a traditional style thing that there's a little bit of bitterness from the apricots, a little bit of sweetness from the natural sweetness from the peach. Okay. And then we're gonna throw in that anise flavor. I think it's gonna work out very well. Now, how do you think all of this, cause like I said, it has that licorice type of thing. So you have a sweetness and you have licorice. Do you think one is gonna overpower the other or do you think one will mask? I think it'll overpower, so like, my thought process was too much sweetness takes away from what you're trying to do. Correct, right. It's not supposed to be a sweet additive. Right. It's supposed to be something that's bitter, floral, kind of, you know, I don't want to use the word pungent, but it's, it's there, it kind of hits you in your face. Yes, you still want to be and reminded after what you So when I was going through the process of figuring out what to do, I don't want to take away from that. Okay. So I feel like this is going to be a deepness and a richness of flavor from the peach and the uh, apricot. And this is just gonna add a little bit to the back and the front as far as what you smell and what you taste in the back end. It's still gonna be nice, light, refreshing. It's still like a nice little sip. Got it, okay. So, oh, is this ready, ready to go? go? It's ready to go. All right, let's see. Cheers, all right, let's do it. Cheers. It's still forward. Like I can yeah. still taste the distinct <clears throat> flavor of the, of, of the liquor. And there's a little but, bit of fruitiness. But a little bit of fruitiness, like in the very back tail end, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and it changes the whole thing. Like yeah. for me, like I would like to have this and, and not to knock on the traditional way, but yeah. this is something that I could be like, okay, let me get another one. You yeah, know? I mean, so. you know, it's like 80 degrees out here right now. Yeah. I can uh -huh. see myself, <laughs> yeah. it's like 90 in here. Right. But I can see myself sipping this. The only thing, tasting it now, that I could probably add to this is some sort of like nutty flavor. Like if I had like black walnut bitters or okay. maybe a little bit of um, orzat or something like, just a splash of mm -hmm. that nuttiness to kind of round the back end out. Right. But I think, we'll be, I mean, again, I like it. Yeah. But I like it with the water, and I think this just adds just enough, not to take away from what the traditional flavoring is, mm -hmm. but just enough there to. And the color is great too. Yeah, the color's good too. Cloud, like cloudiness. So, yeah. You never seem to, you know, to fail me. So yeah, keep, yeah, keep going. I fail myself, but that's how I keep drinking. You know. Mm. Yeah. Good. Um, like I said, the licorice is is, is still there. But at the end, and then at the end of it, that uh, the fruit flavor kind of just wraps around and just yeah. doesn't. So it's not too like, blah, you know. And it's and I taste. think the again when I went back to like the amount of pectin, if you throw these fruits together, I think there's a nice texture. There's a nice roundness, like a little bit of thickness to it. Mm -hmm. That's the honesty that I like about it, mm -hmm. and I think it just works out well. All right, boom. So are we are we have to do something else, or, or is, this, is this? I got one more thing. Like I said, <laughs> okay, it's a little out there. Um, 
but I think it's it's just crazy enough to work. Okay. And I, I can't wait to see your reaction. All right, let's do it. Number two. What do we got here? All right, so, you know, we like to get out of the box here. Um, so from the videos I've seen, you know, people I know that I've talked to, Turkish people love their coffee. That, that is right. true. That is love, different. yeah. It's different than the most coffee. Thing. And when we went to that Turkish spot, you know, I saw the coffee you had and it looked pretty strong. So what I decided to do is like a little riff on an espresso martini. Now what's gonna make this, as I said, it's gonna be a little crazy as far as the ingredients. So the first ingredient, I'm gonna keep it a secret ingredient. I'm gonna have you taste it, and okay. if you like it, then I'll tell you what it is, okay. all right? I'll try to figure out as it tastes. Yeah. We'll all right. So, the cocktail build, we're gonna do an ounce of our secret ingredient. Ounce of cold brew. Okay. This is what's gonna give it that pop. Now, I tried this with regular coffee, it just didn't have enough oomph. All right. All right, so for a little bit of a sweetener, and a little creamier texture, we got about a quarter ounce of French vanilla cream. And then as far as this syrup that I made, now this is gonna be a uh, rich turbinado sugar, um, simple syrup, but I infuse it with fennel, fresh fennel, or anise, whatever you wanna call it. Get about half an ounce of that. Then we wanna throw in half an ounce of the Rocky. Add some ice. Give it a good shake. Nice and frothy, yeah, beautiful notes. deep, <laughs> <laughs> kind of look like it. And then we're gonna garnish it with just a nice little fresh fennel leaf. Okay, that's interesting. Just to give it a nice little aromatic. All right, so Justin, what do you what do you call this, or what is this take on, or? So this is, I mean, it's my take on an espresso martini with a, again, like I said, a nice little secret ingredient, which I think balances this out really well. And I don't even think you'll ever tell what that ingredient is. But again, I wanted to keep some things certainly traditional. So strong coffee where the cold brew comes in, the Reiki, that nice anise flavor, fresh fennel leaf on top. I think the frothiness from the brew, the cold brew, a little bit of the cream, it'll add a nice texture to it. The uh, fennel simple syrup will give it a back end fennel anise flavor. And then the uh, fresh leaf on top will give it a nice front end of that same flavor. And there ain't nothing left to do but to try it. So Let's go, go baby. Yeah, and I think it's uh, the cold brew takes enough control where the Reiki is not too powerful mm -hmm. and it's mostly on the back end or the, the it's an undertone in the flavor. So I think the leaf on top brightens it up a little bit in the front, but it also it's nice, it's strong. This is meant to be a after dinner simper. Okay. This is not a Hey, let me get a happy hour, Mar you know, espresso martini. It's not yeah. one of those. This is definitely a, you know, I'm full. I got a little case of the itis. Yeah. I need some to calm my stomach down, mm -hmm. but pick me up at the same time. And I think this hits that on all levels. I could see people in Turkey actually enjoying this and, and drinking it because it's, you know, it kind of definitely paying homage to their national spirit, but also having like, you know, after, because uh, generally when you have this, you have it with either seafood or you have it with like smaller appetizers. Yeah. I think at the end of everything or this big, meal that you have, this is a perfect uh, nightcap. You know, there you go. <laughs> so my question to you is, Yeah. what do you think that secret ingredient is? Um, let me take one more sip, and if you guys in the comments can think of what the secret ingredient is, go ahead and comment before I can get 
guess it. Uh, okay, I'll take one more sip and see if I can figure it out. If not, oh, I'm going to do it with you. Don't you worry. Tell me. All right. No man left behind. Now it's mostly when I was coming up with this, and this is the only reason why I picked this particular spirit. There's so much of these flavor, okay. it's hard to pick up on other things. But when I made this without this spirit, I used a neutral spirit vodka. It was almost this balance that I just couldn't get right. All so right. what I actually wound up using was silver tequila. Wow, like I would never guess that at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that ounce that I put in there, which is like 33% of this cocktail, is actually tequila. So I use silver tequila, 100% agave. I think the agave rounds it out a little bit. Okay. When you get good silver tequila, real silver tequila, it has this nice, sharp agave flavor, and I think it cuts through some of the, the deep anise flavors that might be too much for certain people. Mm -hmm. And I think it just it gives it a beautiful balance, and yeah. you never know. And that's why I say it's a sipper. You got about three of these. You don't know you get no, a tequila no, up in it. I definitely <laughs> enjoy this cocktail. Uh, not to knock on the first one, but I do enjoy this one. Yeah. More, more over. This um, is this is again the first one was more traditional. Try to just put a riff on what's actually traditional without being too traditional. And this is actually just pure experimentation, pure originality, and then trying to bring a new profile to the flavor profile. Yeah, I, I, I like it. And normally, I don't go for. Uh, Espresso martinis and like that, but yeah. this has like a nice sharpness where it's not too like overly sweet, yeah. or it's not too overly like milky or anything like that. So uh, yeah, and I got the I remember I used to work at this uh, Persian bar, and I had this one girl come in and she kept ordering these Parmesan martinis, and I was like, what what is that? So she ordered an espresso martini with tequila, and she kept she wanted and we had fresh Parmesan for whatever reason, fresh shaved Parmesan on top. And I was about to cut her off the moment she asked for it, but she told me to taste it. I was like, you know what? It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. So that was when I was going through the process of trying to figure out something, you know, new and fun and innovative to do with it. I was like, all right, let me take a little bit of that and kind of riff off of it. That's where the tequila came in. Now the cheese, I don't think the Parmesan yeah. is going to work with this, but I think what we got right here is something, something pretty good. No, I, I agree. And uh, once again, man, like I said, you haven't failed me once. I'm gonna continue to go and see more countries and bring more stuff back to you. Hopefully one day I may stump you and you may say, hey, you know what? I can't figure it out. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Eventually yet, we will. I mean? Eventually we will. Right. It's it. I mean, it's a good process. You know, yes. you just keep drinking and I keep going. Uh, 195 countries. You know, um, I'm almost there, and I'm gonna continue to go back and make sure you guys definitely check out Justin. Check out Scratch Cocktails, and he's got a lot of great things over in his channel and a lot of them on his platform. So uh, if you guys have any questions about like, how to make drinks or anything like that, he's the guy to go to. Um, just, Please. You know, you're just trying to figure out, hey, what, what do I add this and that? Like I said, he's my, my source of, of doing that. And it's always good to come back home and uh, you know connect with friends and have and enjoy drinks like this. So it's basically, we're killing two birds with one stone, man. Yeah, bro. So man, I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Glasses to you. Cheers. Turkey, thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next one.